welcome back to my channel. It is the 12th of September. I am four weeks and four days pregnant. So I'm only four and a half weeks pregnant, but I'm going to call this my four to five week update because I turn weeks on Friday and that is the day that I plan to film and edit and upload. But I'm not going to be able to film this Friday because it's my daughter's birthday this weekend and I just have way too much to do. And Friday is going to be just a slammed day. So we're going to call this one four to five weeks and I'll capture anything new that happens, I guess, in my next week, uh, my next video next week. Here is my BBT chart, the dark blue slash green line. It turns green in fertility friend once you get a positive pregnancy test. So that line are my vaginal temps. The orange line is my Apple Watch and the periwinkle line is my resting heart rate. Um, I do plan to temp until the end of the first trimester. I always say I'm going to do this, but then my anxiety gets the best of me and I stop after six or seven weeks maybe. But I really want to commit to doing it this time because apparently you can witness your placenta taking over between the eight to 12 week mark because your temperatures will gradually start to decrease and go back down to cover line. It has something to do with the placenta taking over progesterone production and stuff like that. But I just thought it would be neat to see a complete chart. So I'm going to try to do it this time. Anyway, here's what my chart looks like now. And kudos to the Apple Watch. I have um, talked a lot of about this as a BBT thermometer option because I feel like my Apple Watch is just all over the place. But ever since I actually got pregnant, my Apple Watch lines have been rock solid. They have been stable and they've been tracking like right up there with my vaginal core temps every night they've been the same. So I thought that was really interesting. I don't know if anyone else has had an experience like that, but um, it seems to be pretty reliable once you get pregnant, at least in my case. Here now are my easy at home pregnancy test line progressions. Again, these only go through, I think, 18 DPO because I'm only four and a half weeks. But in my experience, I have never gotten a dye stealer on an easy at home test. Once my test line gets to be as dark as the control line, that's it. So I, I do plan to continue to test through five weeks. And that's mostly just to complete the series, I think. Um, but I don't expect to get any different results than what I currently have here. What I do plan to do, though, this Friday when I turn five weeks, maybe I'll wait until Saturday when I'm five plus one. Maybe I'll do that. I do want to buy a clear blue digital um, weeks indicator, which shows you how many weeks since you ovulated that you are pregnant. Um, I haven't taken one of these yet because my easy at home lines, they're, they're good enough for me, but I would like to see that digital go to three plus because since these tests aren't, I don't expect them to get any darker. I guess I would just like some small indication that my HCG is still doubling appropriately according to schedule. So I do think I'll do that. And if I do, I'll film it and I'll put it in my next video for my six week update. Anyway, here are my OPKs. And one thing I've found really useful about taking OPKs as a pregnancy test option is that while my HCG test strips aren't getting any darker, they haven't gotten any darker over the past couple days, I do notice that my LH strips are gradually becoming more and more of a dice dealer. I don't know why Easy at Home's pregnancy tests don't do the same thing with dice dealing as the OPKs do, maybe it's important, maybe Easy at Home thinks it's important for people to see an OPK become a dice dealer because then people know they're having a peak, you know, whereas if you just max out at the test line being as dark as the control line, maybe that's like not enough information for some people to determine when relative to that test they might ovulate, I don't know. But it's been very comforting for me to see that even though my HCG test strips aren't getting darker, I am still continuing to see a change in my OPKs. So I've actually thought that was interesting. I've never tested this long with OPKs in my previous pregnancies. This is the longest I've gone. So I never realized that that could be a useful thing until now. I have my first appointment on Thursday. It's called an inscre evening, but I, it's not an in-person thing. It's just digital. And basically, they tell you what you shouldn't be eating. They tell you about drugs and alcohol and how you shouldn't be doing that. And they go over like supplements you're taking or vitamins or whatever. They make sure you're taking vitamins. And they try to make sure that the things that you're taking are not bad or whatever. 
And then, I don't know, it's so dumb. The whole thing is dumb, but you kind of have to do it to get booked in um, to the program, you know, so that they work you into their schedule and whatever. So that's the only reason I'm doing it. I really, like the whole thing is a waste of time, to be honest. But I'm hoping I can talk to them about the anxiety I've been dealing with, which I will talk about in a second, um, and just really beg them pretty much to put it into my file that I would really like to have an early ultrasound just based off of my history with previous losses. I don't think they're going to do it. I didn't ask for it, but they did give me an early ultrasound with my middle kid because I had it recorded on my file that I had had a series of chemical pregnancies before um, I conceived my middle kid. And so when I went into this inscrevening appointment, my midwife told me she was also going to send me a thing in the mail for an early ultrasound um, for peace of mind because of what I had been through. And I'm like, oh my God, this is great. <laughs> so I thought maybe this was just something they always did. Uh Oh, my son's preschool is calling. Okay. Anyway, so um, I thought maybe this is something that they do across the board, maybe for people who have had multiple miscarriages before a pregnancy, maybe they offer mercy scans to people, but I'm really starting to doubt that they will offer me that this time just based off of my experience with trying to just get blood work after having my third loss. And they told me that since my partner and I already had more than one living child between us already, that they were not going to be doing any investigation for us. Like they would not be spending public tax dollars on that kind of health care for us because we had already exceeded the, you know, whatever, exceeded the number of kids that they think is appropriate. I don't know. So I don't think I'm going to get a mercy scan this time. And I'm also not likely going to purchase a an early ultrasound from a private clinic. Uh, I think I'm just going to wing it. But I really, really hope, I really, really hope that talking to this midwife during my inscrevening, that I will be able to talk to her about what I've been going through. And maybe they will offer me a mercy scan. But that's like my nearest appointment. Otherwise, um, beyond that, the next time I'm going to see or talk to any midwife is not going to be until I'm approximately 11 to 12 weeks pregnant. And that's when I go in for that godforsaken combined blood test, which is the reason I was told my last baby had Down syndrome. If you guys want to know all about that drama, I will put that link in the description box below because that was a whole freaking thing. Another thing I want to talk to the lady um, about during my inscript evening is if I can please, just please, for the love of God, can I get an NIPT blood test immediately? Can I skip the stupidity of this combined blood test? Because the combined test, you go in and they take blood from your arm, just like they would an NIPT, but they don't analyze the genetics of the baby. They only take a certain couple of values from the maternal blood serum. They check for PAP-A, which I believe is a protein. Don't quote me. It's been a while. And then they check your HCG. And then they put those numbers in their little formula. They put the mom's age in their formula. And then they send you to do the 12-week ultrasound. And they take the baby's nuchal fold width um, on the back of the neck. And they put it in their formula. And then it spits out a probability based off of these things. Now, in my last pregnancy, my last successful pregnancy with Benny, my HCG was really high in that pregnancy, which apparently is a soft marker for Down syndrome. So my HCG was high, but my PAP-A was apparently low, but it screened me positive for Down syndrome. So I basically was told my baby had Down syndrome. Now, it could be like a little bit of an issue with translation there where I just maybe didn't understand completely what they were saying, but they told me that I screened positive for Down syndrome. So then I had to go to the hospital and I had to do the NIPT, but they only um, process NIPT blood samples every Tuesday at the hospital so long as they have enough samples to process, which turned out to be only once a month. I had to wait 20 entire days thinking my baby had Down syndrome before they even processed my NIPT um, test and told me what the results were. So that was an enormously taxing emotional and psychological time for me and I'm really just hoping that I can be a little bit pissed about that in my inscrevening and see if I can't get an NIPT test to direct instead of this BS combined test because I'm 40 
my odds in their little calculation are already so astronomical that my baby is going to have Down syndrome according to like the stats and stuff. What's the point? Why even waste the time? Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox about that. But my next appointment will be for that blood draw around 11 to 12 weeks. And then I get to go in for my first ultrasound at around 12 weeks. And assuming everything looks good, sounds good, etc., we will probably, probably announce then. So that is the situation with my appointments. Now, in terms of symptoms, that was good timing. <laughs> I guess my main symptom, just like with my pregnancy with Benny and all of the pregnancies I had in between Benny and now, I'm having just very routine wind in my pipes, burping, belching, call it what you want. Um, it's annoying, but it's not too bad. It's not really not too bad. It's okay. The next noticeable thing is that I am peeing more frequently, whereas I'm not drinking any more than I normally am. I just really need to pee a lot, especially at night. I just feel like my bladder is smaller in some way, but I also do just have to pee more frequently. I am irritable. And I don't like that. In fact, let's just loop that into the next symptom I'm having, which is just mood changes in general. I am dealing with some low key depression and some moderate key anxiety. And it's not just anxiety about like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose the pregnancy. I am just dealing with generalized anxiety in general. And it is horrible. I hate it. It coupled with some low key depression, the seasons are changing, it's starting to get much darker outside, the weather is changing, I'm feeling a lot more irritable, I've got a shorter fuse, everything just feels harder right now. I feel like a little salmon swimming upstream um, who is just really miserable, <laughs> you know, like not happy about having to exert all this energy to go upstream. I will say this, this is not the first, nor is it even the second time that I've felt this. This is the third time I can say I have felt this in early pregnancy. This time, obviously, the other time being um, two pregnancies ago when I had that one chemical pregnancy a couple cycles ago. And then also, interestingly enough, throughout the whole first trimester with my middle child, I had prenatal depression and anxiety, I filmed a pregnancy update about it even. I think I was around 11 weeks pregnant or maybe I was seven weeks pregnant. I kept it hush hush for a while when I was doing my pregnancy updates with him because it felt so taboo to be so excited to get to have a baby, you try so hard, you're finally pregnant and then all of a sudden you are really just depressed. I'm not saying I'm depressed about being pregnant but it's so odd. And a lot of my depression and anxiety is starting to revolve around the feelings of guilt. Um, oh my gosh, I'm going to be taking time away from my other kids. I'm taking resources away from my other kids. Oh my gosh, we, we need to move and this is going to postpone the move, which means my kids are going to need to share a room for longer than we had maybe hoped or, you know, just thinking about the world. Oh my God, what if there is a war or a famine or a plague and I have to flee what if something happens to my husband and all of a sudden I'm a single mom with four kids? Which, let's be real, that's that's something that does happen to people all the time. And it's scary to realize that there could come scenarios where all of a sudden you're responsible for feeding your four little children. There's a lot of mouths to feed. Are these scenarios likely in the first world and in, in the modern society? I wouldn't say they're likely, especially because I have family in the U.S. I can literally go to a different continent. We all have our paperwork. We can just go. So I keep reminding myself I have contingency plans, you know, but this is how far reaching my brain is going. And these scenarios suddenly feel like they are going to happen and they are dire. Like because it can happen, I absolutely should be worrying about it with as much weight as if it were just happening right now as it is. So it, th this, this is the guilt anxiety depression cycle I'm in right now, but I recognize it's not normal. And I also recognized I have felt it before and it was hormonal. It was hormonally linked. I felt it in that one chemical pregnancy. I felt it for the whole first trimester with my middle kid. It was really bad. It got so bad that I bought myself a plane ticket on a whim 
to fly from Sweden to LA to go visit my family because I needed to know. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Symptoms. I needed to know that I had something on the books to go visit my mom. I needed someone to hold me. You know, it wasn't even enough to be around my husband. Like I needed to know, I needed to physically touch and feel the security blanket I had around me, the security net, um, in case something bad were to happen. But once I got to be around 12, 13 weeks pregnant, basically once I got out of the first trimester, that anxiety and depression melted away. I was set to actually go see a therapist at that time, but around the time that I had it booked, I started to feel much better. So I'm thankful I have that experience to draw from because it is definitely something I'm feeling now. Is it overwhelming and impacting my normal daily life? No, but it is affecting my mood. Um, It is changing how I feel on the inside for the worse, and it's affecting my sleep. And that is my last symptom that I am dealing with right now is I continue to have vivid dreams and crazy night sweats. That is typical for me. Um, but I'm having a lot of insomnia and restless li- restlessness at night. I don't have a problem falling asleep, but my baby is waking up still once or twice at night right now. He's going through a phase. So when I'm going up with him, or if I have to go up because other one of my other kids has a nightmare or someone needs to go pee, something like that, I um, find it very difficult to fall back to sleep. And if I don't fall back asleep, all of a sudden my body is just like, bing, wide awake, can't fall back asleep, and it's just awful. Then I lay there and go into a, a, a downward spiral of doom with anxiety and depression. This whole thing of being like restless and having insomnia was a huge problem I had with Benny's pregnancy. I talked about it in my early pregnancy updates with him too. Um, I just started to microdose Unisom, which is what I'm currently doing now because two nights ago, I was in a doom spiral of anxiety, just laying up wanting to cry the whole night long and it wrecked me and it's not healthy. So I, I didn't have the anxiety component with Benny. I just stayed up at night and scrolled, you know, or daydreamed. And I was having like a very lovey, happy, wonderful first trimester with him. I just wonder if maybe this has something to do with a pregnancy being preceded by multiple early losses because my hormone, my hormones um, and my menstrual cycles were put through the spin cycle many, many times before getting pregnant with my middle kid and before getting pregnant with this baby. So I just think my hormones are sort of sketchy and all over the place and that's what's causing the anxiety and depression. So those are my symptoms. All in all, I would say I feel absolutely normal and I'm having no pregnancy symptoms, but that's not really true because I am having dreams that are a little bit wilder than usual. I am having night sweats and restlessness. I am having this mood situation I am having the belching and whatnot, but everything else is fine. I've had no cramping at all whatsoever. This pregnancy, I'm not bloated. I'll show you guys my lack of bump in a second. No bloating, no food cravings, no food aversions, no increased sense of smell. Um, I don't get those things. I just don't, I don't get many things in the first trimester. So we'll see how this one progresses. With Benny, I became very nauseous and was throwing up almost daily with him for like four entire weeks between six and 10 weeks pregnant. But my HCG was high in that pregnancy. So we'll see what happens this time. Maybe I just have normal normal HCG and I'll just kind of get that general hangover feeling for a few weeks, but hopefully no vomiting and stuff. That would be amazing. But Let's do a bump shot and then we can wrap this video up. By the way, I'm not going to be able to bring my microphone with me. So I'll show you guys my bump and then I'll come back here, but I can't talk while I'm doing it. I forgot to mention my plans for like fitness this pregnancy. I do plan to have another really active pregnancy and I'm excited to share it. Um, but I have a lot of groundwork to lay. I'm starting this one off a lot softer and a lot weaker than I did in my last pregnancy. So it's going to be a lot more toned down and realistic, but I am going to hold myself accountable here. That's it. Um, yeah, so I will catch you guys, I guess, next Friday when I do my six week update and I'm sure things will be different then because around the six week mark or even sometimes late five week into six week, that's when things start to feel a little yucky. So 
hopefully I make it that far. Um, I'll be updating more frequently on my Instagram until then. Otherwise, I will catch you guys next week. Okay, have a good one. Oh, 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 oh,